European tours, um, you your first ever European tour would have been '96, right? Uh, you were there. Yeah, yeah, I remember. <laughs> yeah, back in the day, and yeah. but that tour didn't go as smoothly as no. things do go oh now. I mean, did, did, did that turn you against touring? Uh, obviously not, but for a while. Um, I mean, looking back, what doesn't you know, kill you. Yeah, <laughs> you know, what doesn't kill you injures you. You know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, but the, that tour has become quite legendary. Looking back now, right? Yeah, it is. I mean, people think you know, Catatonia. You know, in the woods. Yeah. You know, um, back then touring together. I mean, yeah. looking back now, do you remember the fun parts, or do you, do you remember it being a nightmare? The first four days was the fun part, and the rest was the nightmare. No, the night but but that's when Jonas left. You know, yeah, he yeah. went home. Yeah. Uh, I still don't know why he went home. I haven't <laughs> answered it yet. This is on a, you know. <laughs> It's, it's an ongoing. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly <laughs> what you mean. But uh, yeah, I should I should ask him on stage tonight. <laughs> Do a public. <laughs> well, maybe help him get an answer himself. You know? Yeah. We we can shout. Uh, Do shout. it. Yeah. Do it for me. <laughs> Control some underwear on stage with the with the question written on it. Right. Ooh. About um uh when when you talk about playing live. No, now you have released uh I think it's eight full albums. It is yeah. Uh, or oh, you haven't actually released uh, this one. November second. Yeah. Well, how do you pick the songs? Uh, of course, now you play a short gig, forty-five minutes. Yeah. But for a normal catatonic gig, how do you actually pick the songs, and how do you pick it so it's interesting for you mm. and the audience? That's the problem, isn't it? You know what I mean. That's the compromise. You never can make a perfect setlist because there's always going to be someone so fucking disappointed, and you're going to hear it either through the audience screaming at you every night. Or you're gonna hear from your bandmates saying this is boring or you know whatever like that. We just try to swap it around until we find like a configuration that works, you know, both for the audience and us. And uh, it's a problem, you know. It, we all we never have the same setlist we we are going out with, yeah. and we're ending, we're probably ending up with a, a new one when we're you know on the last date or whatever like that. But you know, I don't know. It's I mean if. If you could do the ideal set list, you would need three hours of stage time or something, so... You haven't thought about doing it? Anyway, uh, I've seen Catatonia a few times now. Okay. I actually saw you at Tuska in 2000 and something, one, something like that. Ooh. Anyway, oh. uh, what impresses me when I, when I see Catatonia on stage is that even though you are not doing very much, Jonas, he's like kind of stuck to the yeah. mi microphone and, yeah. and there is always this certain, I don't know, vibe between you and the audience at the same time. I, it's very hard to explain. Mm -hmm. How do you uh, see the audience, the interaction with the audience, from I your agree, point of view? I agree with you. I think Catatonia is very far away from being an uh, entertaining live band, so to speak. We rely on the atmosphere mm -hmm. in, the, in, in the hall, so to speak. If, if, if that set, which is often, you know, it's set, we need the audience help to set the mood. If that's set there, I think we can just, uh, what do you say, play off on it, you know what I mean? And just, uh, it, it just becomes like a black celebration, you know, together. And that, that's, that's everything for me. You know, if I look out in the audience and when I see, I mostly see people with their eyes shut. They're, they're not even looking at us, you know what I mean? They don't need to. They're singing along the lyrics and then I say, whoa, they're into it, you know. That makes me even more into it. So that's, that's, you know, that works for us. What kind of feedback do you get after the show? Uh, I think it was Nurgle who once from Behemoth told me that it was wicked, he played in Mexico mm. and there was no response. He, he, in they, Mexico? Yeah, that's the insane thing, that's what he said. That's I mean, the craziest played, place I ever played. Yeah, and he played and they, they, they went so fast and everything and did the gig and when they come home, it was like uh, comments on the forum and on the, that it was the best experience ever and he was like, Okay. That's because awkward. Behemoth is like a blast, yeah, 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 you know? yeah. No, that's the opposite for us. We we were, what do you say, outvoiced or whatever you would say from yeah. the audience yeah. playing, that we couldn't. I mean, we couldn't even hear the guitar leads and stuff. This was we, in Mexico, was it? Yeah, yeah. Mexico okay. City. I think it's probably my favorite gig so far. Yeah, I, I've heard that as well. Like you yeah. know, when you got Mexico and from uh, further south, down, down they're down, just it's, it's insane. Yeah, they're crazy. Yeah. Um, on that subject of touring again, um, you did the 
as we said, they threw it in the woods. Then I don't remember. Um, the next thing I remember is uh, the Paradise Lost dates you did. You did like this, several dates um, around Scandinavia, Paradise Lost. Yeah. Um, and from then you've been pretty consistent. Um, so how's it been for you? Like, have you noticed yourselves as uh, as you kind of increase in profile, touring life gets easier, um, more rewarding. Um, it always depends on who you're playing with. Always that yeah. makes the tour, that makes the package, that makes the life on the road. If you're with a nice band, then you know that. If you wouldn't, I mean, we there's not there's one exception. We we made a tour with Fintroll. That's maybe not the best match with Catatone, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's pretty much fire and ice, so yeah, to speak. Yeah. It was but it was a fucking hell of a good tour, you know? We, we had so much fun yeah. with the guys and stuff. So fun, yeah. it was easy going, fun, you know, a fun mm. one, but musically it's like, what's going on, <laughs> you know? Was, <laughs> was that like a um, European? Like the, yeah, the whole a thing? full European tour. That's strange. It right. was like night and the new day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> there you go, yeah. Um, you toured with uh, Opus in two thousand one, mm -hmm. which I imagine was because they're such good friends. That was a uh, yeah, that was a good one for you, right? Yeah, we we all we're still we're always talking about yeah. going out together, but we're also saying that most of our audience already know both bands, mm -hmm. so it's not an investment like Porcupine Tree. Mm -hmm. This is an investment tour. Yeah, we're trying to steal their audience. So yeah. yeah, but uh, with Opus, it's just a musical perfect mm -hmm. match. So I mean. I mean, our manager, we have the same management, right? Northern Music. Northern Music yeah. and Pharaoh, right. So he's like, he made up the grand master plan now that he thinks that Opeth, Catatonia and Bloodbath are going to tour together. All right, well. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> to say, I think it's to say something here. Yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, pff, give me a break, you know. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'll give you a break from touring because um, if you go to the album, uh, it's like a small roller coaster uh, in the sense that, of course, it's not like last bits and right. doom, but not it's, yet. It's, no, but it's still it's very as we talked about earlier, flowing and the music is of course more nightish than dayish, mm -hmm. uh, I would say. And and um, but the thing is with this one more than the previous albums is that there are there are hidden gems. Like I, I just listened today to the the promise of the seat. It's like what the fuck was that? That why haven't I heard that right. piano? Just like one tone here and one tone there. Right. Where did that come from? Because I've heard the album like 10, 15 times. Where did that come from? Yeah. You know, there are more, more of those yeah. small Subtle things. Subtle things in yeah. the background. Yeah, we, we made that deliberately because we, there's so much stuff going on on this album that it was very hard to mix it. Mm. Everything needed its place in the sound picture. And, uh, you know, we don't want uh, the electronics, which involves loops, uh, pianos, uh, strings, all that kind of stuff. We don't want it to be dominant in the sound picture. So you have to bury it, but you shouldn't... Uh, uh, I mean, it still has to be there. So that's why I think you're picking up on stuff subtly, because they are there, but they're not evident maybe the first time you hear them. And that's a grower for me, you know, that, me that makes the album more... A chance to last long. Yeah, yeah, because it, it, it'd be more long term, you know. Right, because, right. Um, it's not like a quick fix. Um, yeah. It, uh, it's I mean, even for me interesting, you know. Yeah. I, I'm not really listening to our albums once they're done, but I'm not sure I've heard every fucking electronic note still, you know what I mean? There are mm. stuff going on there which I'm still forgetting, like, is that a guitar or is that a distorted piano? Or what, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like. We tried to totally erase that uh, border yeah. between what's guitar and what's electronics and just uh, call it atmosphere, basically. And how hard is it to recreate this kind of thing live? We're not there yet. Okay. <laughs> there has to be like step. 10 more persons. Yeah, so I mean, right. on this, yeah, on, I mean, there's backtrack solution yeah, as well. But, but on this tour, we haven't had the time to do anything on that. And we're only playing one song from the new album. But we, we said, let's do it the Motorhead Rock and Roll way. Let's do it stripped for this one, just as a teaser. So there's no electronics going on in the song, so we're just hoping people are going to have some... hope they're going to be drunk and not hear it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I thought it was...